remember what you could buy for a bit or a shilling? How about some mobby? Mobby is the ant's pint. Though it's not as potent as creek water, which after drinking the meal of lava will ensure you return to the motherland. Despite the quadrillion post-elections morass, every dentist has a favorite mobby shop. And I am convinced that everyone's best is a mobby from the cake shop on the corner where they live. Blending mobby is not rocket science. Pour the cut, boil the concentrate into water, add sugar, preferably brown, and stir vigorously. It's an old white steel that must have old mobby to blend a new batch, add spices, and leave in the sun to percolate. As quality is not the main criterion, then it's quantity. And who can beat a large glass of Chakasang's mobby, Murray and Cumming Street, now Kwamino, for two cents in 1945? Runner-up would be in the early 50s, Mount Eagle Sioux, Camp and Regent Street, after games on Thomas Lands. Left my location to our query, there was the Mount Eagle at Wellington and North Road, opposite the Chinese Silent Temple Lodge. South side, across the street, was Derek's Lemon in the Marble Bottles, which mixed with Mobby equaled any shandy, or better, cream soda and carnation. Recently, I paid a dollar fifty US in Orlando, Florida, for a medium glass of mommy that had enough ice to sink the Titanic. <laughs> How about some black pudding? Guyana's weekend gourmet food, better than the Scottish haggis, but then they don't add my man pork. My first encounter with this delicacy was around 1944. Jimmy's in Rob Street was the best during World War II. My father, ordering the family quota, accepted hot, expecting hot off the fire. As the elder son, I received the first taste. Tongues of fire seared through my ears, like the 1947 Savoy Fire. Betty entrenched herself as a black pudding queen since the early 50s, under the bottom house on Regent Street, West of Border Market and the Employment Exchange. She had far more customers than her labor likens on Norton Street. Mm -hmm. And she was still the best in the 80s. Her moss was a kite show delight. And my only complaint was her assistant, Ralph, who serving of the companion souls were as meager as the old ladies in the shoe. He must have come from a large family. <laughs> Another black pudding delight was the vendor with huge bandage legs outside the Great Line Round Shop at Ralph and Common Street, always sold out before the 6 o'clock beat. Her addition of a final dab of oil with wafted feather onto the sliced portions was Japanese fan dance artistry. The best ice cream would be a toss up between Demico and Sterling in the 70s, and this was only because Brown Betty's, after 40 odd years of sustained excellence, had become too frothy. <laughs> Brown Betty introduced popsicle, fudgicle, and creamsicle in the late 40s. And before the 1945 Cooper's Black Friday was located on Hink Street. At the local Mel's Diner, you could get a great milkshake and egg sandwich for 18 cents. After Nifty sold the fountain in the late 50s, freezer fresh on Camp Street, in the old shoe all premises, was another ice palace delight. Cyril's garage on Thomas Street made all the phone calls. Today's young ones are thrilled and entertained by TV, video games, Game Boy, and hundred dollar ransoms from permissive parents who spoil them rotten, but stun their growth, stifle their imagination, and restrict maturation. My generation was encouraged, motivated, coaxed, cajoled, inspired with the promise of a penny to buy sweet. Let's ponder a while what a penny, three pence, a bit, a shilling, procured for us yesteryear in our elder battle, the yeah. end. Our gym, that's a penny, purchased three ten-inch sticks of homemade sticky sweet, colored darker than the brown ingredients from the Huckster's tray at the public school game. Other popular favorites were the green mango with salt and pepper, a peeled orange, slices of pineapple, cassava or corn cone, a pack of metal, a bunch of gin with twins and a shoe. At the parlor cake shops, a wide variety of cakes and pastry filled our voracious appetites. There were coconut buns and seed and coconut biscuit, sweet bread, 
beige and bold stones look in the tart color round the world, Solara, Waitai, Rockland, Sternova, and Chester. Now Chester was on soul bread, returned, salt, and bait. Some of the hay, fruit was black cake, but the favorite to fill it even if you big it. For more than a penny, the gourmet paid free would be pine tart, patties, Chinese cake, or cheese straw. A penny bought shave ice colored with a spectacular rainbow of colored syrups from the reused Wendy's bottles stacked on the ring ring shave ice cart. Add condensed milk to high.